is al mu'min al qawi khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allah min al mu'min al da'if wa fi kulli khayr Rasulullah says the strong believer is more beloved he's better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the weak believer qawi the arabic means strength or strong what does strength what does qawi mean here the scholars of hadith mentioned that strength here is talking about all different types of aspects. Physical strength, strength in iman, strength in knowledge, subhanAllah, strength in your respective fields. Having good techniques as a computer software engineer, being knowledgeable as a doctor, being knowledgeable as a businessman or as an engineer, this is what strength means. Are you a good doctor and striving to be the best doctor you can every single day? Are you an honest engineer? Are you an honest businessman? This is what Kobe means. And the better believer, the more beloved person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who knows his or her, her field better than the other. So if you have two doctors, and they both believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to this hadith, the one who's a better doctor, he's better than the other person, according to this hadith. Meaning, what is the hadith telling us? So be the best in your fields. So if you're an engineer, strive to be the best engineer. If you're a doctor, strive to be the best doctor. If you're a sheikh, an imam, strive to be the best sheikh or imam. This is what Rasulullah says. And a weak strength, it can also mean physical strength. Now how does physical strength help us in our imam, in, in our obedience to Allah? The one who's physically strong, he keeps himself fit. He or she will be able to perform his duties better than the weak believer. The one who's strong, he can make the movements in the salah better than the one who's weak. He has stronger knees, he has stronger legs, he has stronger arms. So he can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better than the one who's weak, who's unfit. The one who has physical strength and physically fit, he can make hajj, he can make umrah, he can make tawaf around the Kaaba better than the one who's weak. Stressing the importance of subhanAllah even physical strength. Not to be a bodybuilder or a power lifter, but to maintain basic fitness, which will aid us in our ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is number one. Number two, ihris ala ma yinfa'uk. So aim or be determined to do something that benefits you. Set goals in this life. Set plans. Have dreams. What do you want to do with this life? Of course, the essential goal, we know it. All of us are aware of the essential, essential purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But after that, what else? What is your purpose in this life? Set goals. And set goals, subhanAllah, it's beneficial for, beneficial to you, to your iman, and to humanity. Strive to do something that will help your brothers and sisters in your community and all around the world. It's beneficial to have a job. So go out and get a job. It's beneficial to have a family. So try your best to raise a family. It's beneficial to have wealth. So go out and get wealth. Earn halal wealth. And you have to have dreams. What do you want to do with this life? Don't live a lazy life. Don't live a basic life. Set high standard goals and inshallah we'll work hard together. This is number two. Number three, وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ Before doing anything of the two steps that we mentioned, وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ 
So, before doing anything, seek aid, assistance, and help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, our scholars make mention that we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help through Salat al istikhar which we, I'm sure, all of us know. The, uh, the prayer where, subhanAllah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His guidance. So is this good for me? Is becoming owner of my company, is it something good for me? Is marrying this person something good for me? This new job, will it, will it bring khayyim in my life? Will it bring goodness and purity in my life? So, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if what we are seeking in our dua, our invocation, if it's something good for us, so give it to us, grant us what we're asking for. So you make salat al istikhara, you make dua, and then you continue upon this dua. You keep making dua, you make the hajjah, and you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make dua in your sujood, in the sajda, because we know that the abd, the servant of Allah, he's closest to him, Allah in his prostration. So you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance in these, in these different types of prayers. This is number three. Number four, wala ta'jaz. Don't give up. An area where we have a lot of misconception. Dua by itself, mere dua by itself will not accomplish your goals. What do I mean by this? Don't take it as a disrespect to dua. It's not. People think, some people think, believe that just making dua is enough to accomplish our, our missions in life. I'll give you an example. You have a college student. He has an exam coming up. Medical student. He's preparing for his MCATs, for his uh, medical exam, the entrance to get into medical school. This person, He's not attending his lectures, he's not studying, he's not memorizing what he should memorize, he's not paying attention to class, he doesn't care about the exam that's coming up. Question, will this person pass his exam? Of course not. But he's making dua, or she's making dua to Allah, day and night, to prove that dua by itself will not be able to, for a person to receive what he is seeking. Dua by itself. SubhanAllah, it's like going in a car. You know, I have to travel to Canada. And I make the dua for uh, traveling. But I don't start the car. And I don't make an effort to get to my location. Will I arrive to my location? Of course not. He will not pass his exam. Why? Because there is no effort. So the, one of the most important things, you do the three steps that we mentioned, but after that comes in the hardest part. Then you put in the blood, the sweat, the tears, the hard work, in SubhanAllah, helping you accomplish your goals, helping you accomplish your visions and your dreams. So work hard, don't lose hope, and don't give up. Because Rasulullah says in a different hadith, Ya ayyuhal nas, alaykum bil qas, fa inna allaha la yamallu hatta tamallu. O mankind, upon you is moderation. Not to be all the way to the left, not to be all the way to the right, but to be in the middle. For verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give up on you unless you give up on yourself. So Allah will not give up on us unless we give up. This is number four. And number five, the in asaba shay. So if something if something happens and the door to your visions and your dreams it's closed, so listen to the advice of Rasul. Rasulullah says, advises us. Do not go back and begin to think, oh, if I would have done this, maybe the outcome would have been different. Do 
not relive your failures on a daily basis, my brothers and sisters. This will, this is a very unhealthy habit which will cause severe depression. SubhanAllah, destroy your entire life. You will not be able to be happy as a Muslim. As a person, you will not be able to live with happiness. There will be always, SubhanAllah, grief and sadness and dwelling on the past. Don't let your failures drag you down. What's the purpose of our mistakes? So we learn from the mistakes, but not so we can dwell and live on these mistakes. Instead say, I tried my best. I gave my 110% effort in my job, but I fell short. This is from the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And move on. And learn from the mistakes. And don't make them in the future. But living in the past and living with, the, with this guilt, it's a very unhealthy way to live. So learn from your mistakes and move on. You tried your best, leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was not from Allah's qadr, from His predestination, for you to gain or receive whatever it was you were seeking in the first place. أَقُولُ اللَّهِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ وَإِسَائِهِ وَسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ So just to recap, the first, the five steps on our plan, our foundation in this life. The first, the strong believer, he's better than the weak believer. Strong in every single case. In physical strength and iman and knowledge and subhanAllah, your degree of knowledge and, and capabilities in your respective field. Be the best of the best. Aim and strive to be the best of the best. The second, which is which is be determined to do something beneficial. Strive to do something with your life that will benefit people. And have a purpose in life. Like I said, purpose of course, to worship Allah. But besides this, what's your purpose? So figure out your purpose. Number three, what's the end of that? Seek aid and, and assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before doing anything else. Number four, wala ta'jas. Do not give up. No matter how hard things get, do not give up. I have some people, there are some people memorizing Quran, okay? Students of Quran that are aiming to memorize the Quran. It's something difficult. But just because something is difficult, it's okay for you to give up. So memorizing the Quran was easy. So everyone would do it. If becoming a doctor was easy, everyone would do it. If becoming an engineer, or the best engineer, if it was something easy, easily attainable, then everyone would be an engineer, a hafa, and a doctor. But it's hard. This does not give you the excuse to give up. Especially if it's Especially if memorizing the Quran is a dream of yours. It's something you really want. So apply these, these steps. Be strong in your religion and physically. Set plans. Be precise, be neat, be organized. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. And then, wala ta'chas. Work hard and don't give up. And number five, if something happens, and your dreams, your efforts fall short, recognize this from the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would just like to briefly explain the last one, the Qadr, two minutes, inshaAllah. So, what's the benefit of Qadr, of the predestination? The Qadr is bringing peace and sakina into our hearts. The Qadr is eliminating doubts and the regrets of the past, of our mistakes in the past. You and I, we can never change our past. And the Qadr, subhanAllah, it's not used to justify our future actions. But the predestination is used to, to console 
our past actions, our past mistakes. Don't say, SubhanAllah, it's from the mother of Allah for me not to be successful. You can't say this because you don't know the future. But you can say, so I, I tried 100%. I, I gave my best effort to uh, receive this job, to get this job, this employment from this certain company. But it didn't happen. I tried my best and I left the rest of Allah. And it was from the mother of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it wasn't a creed for me. This will bring an enormous amount of sakina, of, 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 of uh, peace in your heart. You will be you will be content with your life. Because at the end of the day, if you are if you are giving your best effort for a specific goal, and you ask Allah to help you, and it doesn't happen. So it wasn't decreed for it to happen to you, for you to gain more love or have more children. That wasn't the plan of Allah. Recognize this, acknowledge this, and move on. As for the future, we try our best, we work the hardest we can, and we strive. We should strive to receive the best mother of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always make dua for verily the dua is the only thing that can change the qadr. We ask Allah to give us the best qadr. Before we end the khutbah, I would like to make one announcement, inshallah. If anyone does not understand the khutbah, the khutbah is English, of course, you know, where in America it's, it's appropriate for the khutbah to be in English. But this message only applies for the ones who do not understand the khutbah. If you understand English, it doesn't apply to you. If you don't understand the khutbah, I would like you to go to the back. There's a paper in the back. And write the language you would like the khutbah to be translated into. If you do not understand the khutbah, what I'm saying, and I keep the vocabulary and everything very basic, so all degrees and levels of education we can understand. If you do not understand what I'm saying in the khutbah, please write the language that you would like the khutbah to be translated into. And inshallah, within a few weeks, I will uh, create some type of program or way where inshallah, every single person, they can understand what I'm saying in the khutbah, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us fifth, the yani, uh, understanding of the deen. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana. وقنا على النار اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة في الدوس ونعوذ بك من النار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم العلم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزلكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم اللهم اكبر اللهم اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا انت والله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح خذ قامه الصلاه خذ قامه الصلاه اللهم اكبر اللهم اكبر لا اله الا الله استقيموا الله اكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا
Okay. 